Hey, dude. Yo. We got so much to get to today. I'm oh, very yeah? I'm excited for the show. Really? Yep. We're, we're almost done with the results girl competition. I, uh, hope, I hope that's not true. I hope we more uh, come in. Well, we'll find out. But as of right now, we're on our last contestant. So that would be a reminder to all of you ladies. You want to get in on this. You have till next Monday. It's been a good competition so far, I have to say. Uh, heated, heated battle. I like I like them all so far. I'm voting we'll see about today. I'm voting for the field. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get going, shall we? Yep. Attention, parents. What you're about to see is not suitable for kids. Shoot, it's not even suitable for some grown-ups. You might want to walk away now if you ain't into these type of things. I'm going to give the people what they want. Sensation, horror, shock. I'm going to deliver the goods because I'm alive and I'm not backing down. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Guess where you just got into cool guy zone. Creepos, welcome to another episode of your favorite true crime podcast, the show about creeps by creeps for you creeps. I'm your host. My name is Vinny and joining me today in the studio. You know him. You love him. It's hot. Carl. What is happening? Vinny Paulino. Let's see that dick. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's too early. I did say that. that. I am not that forward. Sir. Much too early in the show for that. My How friend. How dare you, doing? you? I'm great. I'm great. It's Tampa week, baby. We're, we're getting, kicking off Tampa week. We're getting the fuck out of Rochester. Yes, we are. We just did subreddit surfing live. We made everybody come here and mm-hmm. now we're getting the fuck out. Yeah. Well, it's uh it's good timing too. I think it's gonna be a lot nicer in Tampa than it is up here. Yeah. I'm very upset that you booked it at this time. I'm very upset. I'm still mad at you for trying to get Suttering John here in March. Are you still mad at me? No. Good. <laughs> So uh, if I had that shot collar, you would have just gotten nailed, buddy. You're right. You would have I, just my bad. All nailed. right. Good call. Good call. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it right now. Thanks. We I live in a SJ free world, everybody. Uh, well, yeah. Good luck with that. Hey, um, I have to tell you, today is a very special holiday. Uh, I it believe. is Super Chat Monday. It certainly is, everybody. So uh, have a very happy Super Chat Monday. Man, everyone people in the chat are already celebrating Look gartner this. fan gartner fans already celebrating always the creepiest creeps thanks for the horror you're welcome you are we're welcome for. we're gonna bring that today and my boy simon three four three five bucks says happy super chat monday see you in largo carl awesome we will see you there i'm really looking forward what to is that. that a threat simon oh speaking of oh, which sorry. sorry in the discord there's a watp meetup channel that's where people go and talk about uh where we're going to be in Tampa, what everyone's going to be doing, where they're going to be hanging out. Yep. I know there's a meetup Friday morning, 8 a.m. at Conservative Grounds. But uh, the other thing we have to talk about is uh, Hulk Hogan's place. Brother. Thursday night. You want to go there? More than anything okay. I could possibly think of. Let's do that then. Thursday night. If you're in the Tampa area, come hang out with us. After I get done with the Who Are These Socials, we'll head down there. I'll be there. I'll Sweet. I'll be I'll start there in the afternoon. They serve drinks, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'll hang out all day there just in case one of the Hulkster's family shows up. Oh, I can't wait. Or if Hulk comes there to personally remove me. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh I want to say hey to Gut. Thanks for the five bucks. Hola creepos. Love you, Vinny. Carl, you're tolerable. I, I appreciate that, Gut. Everybody's celebrating today. I love it. This is a, a very festive holiday. And you know what else we have to celebrate? Tell me. You talked about it in the cold open. Sure did. We have another contestant for the results girl contest. Now, the problem is there's no results today. It's not a problem. Oh, I gave her an assignment. Oh, good. Okay. Today, she's not going to be our results girl. Today, she's going to be our category girl. Ah. And she is going to tell us what we're doing on today's episode and give us a little update as to what we're working with as far as the game. Excellent. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our next contestant, Redhead Meg, everybody. Redhead Meg. Hey, Hi, what's up, Meg? Hello, creeperinos. 
Now, Welcome to the program. We had the pleasure of meeting you in uh, Detroit twice, I believe. You came to both of our Detroit shows. And, yes, I did. Uh, it, it's a lot of fun to see you again here. Uh, I'm thank you for throwing your hat, your flower, so to speak. Into Aren't the this live room. shows so much fun, Meg? Shouldn't people definitely get their tickets at WATPLive.com? They should, and they should also go to hackmania.com to, you know, right, let's not confuse go to the, the creep off show. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll promote that after Largo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, let's not confuse like. people. Like WTPLive.com is the only URL you need to know. <laughs> we'll start talking about Hackamania next week. Correct. Oh, I see. Okay. That's so all Hackamania all the time. So, Megan, why don't you uh, do your audition as you prepare let's get ready for today's contest you're gonna kick us off for it ready scene begin okie pokey so last week we had a scum parade uh so there were no results to read which is okay because uh today the contest will continue and the current score is carl with one Vinny with zero yeah i like that can we get a drop of her saying Vinny with zero? No. That's good. No, we cannot. Well, um, in uh, honor of WT, WATP going to Florida this Friday, um, this week's category is Biggest Creep from Tampa Bay. <laughs> All right, so we both brought Zumach, I assume. Yeah. All right, we'll just have <laughs> different presentations. Yeah, I got the uh, I got the early years. You're gonna take the yep. last. Step. Yeah, you got you got Cleveland, yeah. and I have uh, L.A. to Tampa. Yeah, perfect. But last but not least, tickets are on sale now for who are these podcasts live at WAT Live. That is correct. Or go to whoarethese.com. There's a link right on our homepage for Ooh. your tickets. All right, we've we've hoard for that. Uh, the Mechanical Ape, thanks for the five bucks. Happy Super Chat Monday, everyone. Remember to celebrate by voting for Vinny. That's not how you celebrate Super Happy Chat Monday, Super Mechanical Chat Ape. Monday. That's not how you do it. He's doing I'm great. honored to be here on such a holiday as this. Thank we you. Do, yeah, it, it is a very special day for you, Megan. Uh, so, yes, we do have a contest today. We'll be competing for who can bring the biggest creep from Tampa to get our Tampa week started. Yep. What a way to get warm up to a town, huh? <laughs> it's good stuff. It is. So Megan, do, where can people follow you if they'd like to? Um, well, I have an Instagram account that I recently made and my handle is Kabuz. I can it's K A B U Z Z I can. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's unique. I will, I will not remember that, but buzz uh, I can. At I'm, buzz I'm I can. sure you'll get a lot of people signing up over there. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see well, you. Well, hold on a second. I mean, she's not getting as much airtime as the others have gotten. So let me just ask a quick question. Please. Yeah. Megan, right. uh, well, let, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you found uh, the creep off. And uh, there's people in the chat who want to know if you're single and like cats. I do like cats. I have an orange cat. Um, I am not single. I actually found out about the whole WATP universe through my boyfriend. And um, he, during the uh, pandemic, he was very adamant on listening to all of the uh, all the different not podcasts he should not be listening to. So you found and, a boyfriend. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Right? Nice. I'm, I'm very, very lucky. He... Uh, said, well, you know what? You should try this other thing called the creep off. So uh, what I do for a living is currently I'm an Amazon dispatcher slash Amazon delivery driver. Okay. And I would listen to the creep off on my way to a stop. Sometimes our delivery areas can range from 30 minutes away to an hour away. So it gave me a decent amount of time. I also had to invest in a cochlear, um, headphones so that i'm not broadcasting it out to the world smart yes good you do good not want to be playing the creep off on your phone and walking into uh residential areas or businesses or anywhere people might be you know i asked meg and i were chatting a little bit before this started carl and uh, she told me she went to a, a very weird place over there in michigan that you might need to check out oh and then she also has an idea for the wheel of consequences inspired by that place where was it megan what was it called 
It's called Frankenmuth, uh, also known as Little Bavaria. Oh, I like it. Mm. Yep. Okay. A very touristy attraction to kind of town. Um, Do they have beer anywhere around there? Oh, lots of beer. Nice. Many places to grab the beer. Sometimes, a- depending, you could uh, uh, walk outside with some of the beer. They have a huge <laughs> thing going on for uh, Oktoberfest happening. Um, but what my concept. Yeah, my consequence idea is uh, uh, just from wandering around, all of the people working there were either wearing these little dresses in honor of Bavaria, mm-hmm. but the men were wearing Lederhosen. Of course, and I think yeah. a good consequence idea would be the full Lederhosen outfit, including the, the cute little hat. Mm-hmm. The suspenders. I have to pull that out of the closet, huh? I have to find that in the Maybe back of my closet. closet. I, that's what I said. I bet she's got <laughs> one already. I bet you he's already got one. What do you feel? How do you feel about the later hose and concert? I think that's fun. I like that one. Yeah. Why she was saying that, I was thinking about we could also go full Scottish kilt. Do Ooh. that for Full Roddy Piper. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Is- See, you would like that too much. Because they just okay. pretend to be Roddy Piper. How about this? How about we throw full Roddy Piper? You have to wear the kilt, but then you have to go in half blackface. <laughs> like when he did that shit where he was talking shit about the junkyard dog. Great idea. Buddy. WWE scrubbed that. Google Great. Roddy Piper blackface later. Great you idea. Shit and you want to see oh, goodness. Happens. Well, Megan, thank you for that. Uh, I like that idea, actually. I'm going to add it to the wheel. All awesome. Right. As long as you write it down. I won't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Megan. Kabuz I can, everybody. Kabuz yeah, I can, can on Instagram. Follow Megan. All right, Megan. We'll see you again soon. Bye bye. All right. Another lovely addition. Yeah, man. All of them are lovely. To the competition. I don't Wonderful. know how we're going to figure right. this one out. I don't either. We're going to let everybody vote. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to leave this open for a couple more days, probably till Wednesday. And then I'm going to set up a Patreon vote. So, it's going to be open to everybody but it's going to be on our Patreon page and there'll be links to it. We'll make sure everybody knows where to go. You'll be able to vote for Danny. You'll be able to vote for Mahalia. You'll be able to vote for Megan. And then you'll be able to vote for redhead Meg. And uh, if we have anybody else, we're going to postpone that vote and we'll let them audition. Sounds good. All right. Now we have a competition to do, Carl. You're in the lead. I am. So that means you have to go first, I believe. Let's do it. All right, creepiest person from Tampa, and I actually did not go with Chad Zumach. I found someone who's slightly worse huh. than Chad, and I'll just give you this overview, and then you have some video clips over there I'm going to have you play, but let's start with this. Ronnie O'Neill shot his girlfriend with a shotgun. She called 911. She exited the residence. Ronnie chased her down and beat her to death with the shotgun. He then stabbed his daughter with an ax It was referred to as a tomahawk in one report and stabbed his son with a knife. Ronnie then set his daughter and son on fire using gasoline. That's right. Ronnie O'Neill III is my creep, and that pretty much summarizes what he was up to. A hundred ways to kill your family with Ronnie (laughs) O'Neill. Right. You could use a knife. You could use a tomahawk. You could use a a shotgun. You could use an axe, Jack. (laughs) The blunt end of a shotgun, even. You could use a knife, Rife. Um, yeah, so this is a fun little incident that happened. Apparently, he's hanging out with his girlfriend, who's also the mother of his two children, and he decides that she's been possessed by the devil. Oh, in one fact, of these again? He says that uh, she has a white devil in her. The worst kind of devil there is, the white kind. Yeah. So he chases She was her. going to work on time. She was <laughs> investing our money. She had a white devil in her. I knew it. <laughs> you opened a bank account? What the fuck? This is so responsible of you. Car insurance. <laughs> Car insurance. Wow. She, Vinny started it this time. Vinny started it. <laughs> she hushed him in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, everybody. So, yeah, apparently chased her into her daughter, who, by the way, is special needs, mentally handicapped, daughter's room. She's hiding in the daughter's closet. He comes in with the shotgun, shoots her in the arm. The daughter witnesses all of this. So then she runs out, you know, calls 911, runs out. He chases her down in the yard, beats her to death with the shotgun, goes back inside, gets an axe to chop up the special needs daughter, and then attacks his son. 
and stabs him. Now, here's the miracle of this, Vinny. Even though he stabbed his son multiple times and set him on fire, his son got out and survived. Wow. And what's fun about this is that Ronnie O'Neill III decided to defend himself. He declined having an attorney try to defend him. He's like, no, I got this. Hold my beer. And so it's a rare case where the father got to cross-examine the son, who was a witness, in the in the case. Now, they didn't have the son in the courtroom. Uh -huh. He was on video call. Uh -huh. But if you play my, my number four, this is uh, him talking to his son about the incident. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. Number four. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> so I'll walk around and say, like some words. And do you remember what words your father told you to say? Um, Allah Akbar. Allahu Akbar? Yes. Did he do something to your sister? Yes, he uh, hit her with an axe. Okay, so that's him testifying before the cross-examination. I didn't set that up perfectly. Oh, no. right. That was the uh, the prosecutor asking him about that. So apparently, I hate parents when they try to bring up their kids' religious. I know. Yeah. What What can I do? To, I see you're shooting at mom. What can I do to help dad? Well, if you were said a couple Allahu uh, Akbar's, that would be helpful. You, you got it, pop. You got it, pop. You got it, buddy. I remember when I was a kid, I used to like to help my dad around the house too. Yeah, right. Okay, so this kid's 11 years old at this time. He was eight when the incident happened. So three years later, he's testifying. And uh, this is the question, my, my clip number five, this is the question that Ronnie O'Neill asks his son. I don't like what this is labeled. <laughs> Did you see me shoot your mom? No. Did I hurt you that night of this incident? Yes. I did. And how did I hurt you? You stabbed me. And investigators have said that Ronnie O'Neill tried to set his son and their house on fire. Yeah, so, so this guy's not a good lawyer? No, he's not great. Did I, did I hurt you that night? Yeah, you stabbed me multiple times. You don't remember that? Then you set me on fire. You don't. Dad. Come on. Is this guy going for the who me defense? <laughs> yeah, he's like, this kid's making this shit up. That, by the way, he had 30, uh, 30% of his body was uh, burnt coming out of that house. So it's really a miracle that he survived. Wow. And um, this is great because the way that this guy's closing arguments, and really this whole case is just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to play a couple of his closing arguments. This is a lot of fun. So he's trying to intimidate the prosecution. He's like, He's supposed to be addressing the jury like they didn't prove this. He's saying that there's doctored uh, 911 call. There's doctored video. He's claiming that they they set him up, that he didn't do this. Yeah. And so my obviously uh, my clip number one, this is him yelling at the, the prosecutors. And like I told you earlier, you will know the truth, whether in this trial or the next one. Better believe it. And if you think I'm here to play around with y'all, God damn it on that. All right, Mr. O'Neill, please stop using um, swearing language. It's not appropriate in a closing argument. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Would you want that guy pissed at you, Vinny? Do you see the way he's looking at these? I'm not here to play around. Ask my wife. Do you see the way he's looking at these attorneys? He's like, you're next, motherfuckers. What do you think the bailiff is doing during that? Because he's got to be like, every time he raises his voice, he's got to be like flinching. Like a little no bit, shit. Right? God damn. All right. So this is uh, my clip number two. This is the prosecutor going objecting. He's like, this is not how you do a, your uh, closing argument, sir. Yeah, says you. <laughs> now he played a recording that was sped up. Why didn't you play the regular recording that people can understand what the call was saying? Objection to the defendant asking you questions, Your Honor. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to okay. people. <laughs> Mr. O'Neill, listen, please just keep in mind this is not personal towards the prosecutors. Please keep your comments directed towards the evidence and the law. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that guy was just hired to. 
make this argument against you, sir. He's not actually the problem here. You this realize guy, that, right? This guy isn't a creep. He's kind of fun. <laughs> he's a little He's fun. kind of adorable. He's fucking nuts, dude. Yeah, he's crazy. Well, listen to what he says at the very end of his uh, closing argument. My, my clip number three here. This might not be the best uh, strategy. I like, this I like how you have this one labeled. Tell it like it is. Yeah. Okay. You heard Mr. Khalil Brown. You've been hearing me for two weeks now telling you that they committed criminal acts against me with the 911 calls and that fraudulent video that they just showed y'all. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. Okay. Okay. Please tell me. You heard on Khalil glove. Brown. He said that he was actually sure that I only hit Kenyatta Barron three times. You heard. I called him to tell you that I ain't running from nothing. They didn't call Khalil Brown to tell you that. I did. You have to ask yourself why that is. Because I want you to know the actual facts. I did kill Kenyatta Band. <laughs> All right. But I want you to tell it like it is if you're going to tell it. So he's mad that they're saying he killed her with hitting her more than three times. And he's going, no, 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 no. I did kill her. But I only hear those three times. That's it. The, the witness I brought in even said that. He saw me hit her three times. Pretty good argument, huh, Vinny? Pretty good Not closing guilty. statement. Not guilty. <laughs> Not guilty. Well, wow. the judge uh, might disagree with you on that. I, my head is spinning. That is insane. <laughs> He's amazing, right? They found him competent to represent himself. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I think they should You know why like, it is? Because they were just like, come on. Come yeah, on, I know. Let's watch. It is pretty fun. Yeah. All right. So this is uh, my my clip number six here. This is the judge sentencing our, our boy. Oh. 19 years I've been at this job. I've seen human beings killed at the hands of others in every way imaginable. You name it, I've seen it. Shooting, stabbings, drownings, suffocates. Nobody told me they were bragging. Uh, cars and DUI manslaughter cases. Horrible things. This is the worst case I have ever seen as far as the facts go. Okay. The nah. worst thing she's ever seen. So Ronnie O'Neill III on July 23rd, 2021, was given three life sentences without the possibility of parole, plus 90 years running consecutively. So they really don't want this guy getting out of prison ever, and he's not going to. Yeah. But let me just wrap this in a nice little bow. Okay. I'm, I'm interested because Ronnie O'Neill the third, his son, Ronnie O'Neill the fourth is the, the kid he tried to kill. Yeah. Stabbed him, set him on fire. Well, on November 25th, 2019, Ronnie the fourth was adopted by detective Mike Blair, who cared for him the night of the murders. Ronnie the fourth changed his name to Ronnie Blair when he joined the family of seven, including Mike and his wife and their five other children aged 16 to 23. Mike recalled the night of the murder, saying that there was no expectation Ronnie would live, and that he considers Ronnie's recovery to be a miracle of the adoption. Ronnie says that he is loved and part of the family. So the detective who showed up on the crime scene then adopted this kid and brought him into his family. I'm going to say that's truly amazing. I Now, I understand we're doing a lot of ball washing for police officers lately, and I apologize for that. But that's pretty incredible. Good on him. Good on Detective Mike Blair. So, Carl, are you uh, y'all done now with that? I am. Vote for Carl at thecreepbuff.com. Ronnie O'Neill the third. And actually, if you want to pull up the super chat that I saw come in, hold on. I think this person has a pretty good uh, second Let's do idea that. as well. Well, hold on. We missed a couple. Oh, yeah, there. we did miss a couple. Uh, Andrew Gonzalez says Jessica looks different this week. <laughs> Thanks for the five bucks. Agreed. She's, doing, uh, she's trying a different look. Live Ween, two bucks says Isotopes. Amazing a tier for Eddie cover. Carl wins. That's correct, Live Ween. Check out uh, the Isotopes, a tier for Eddie on YouTube. You can see us playing it live at this very club, actually. No shit. During the, pa during the uh, pandemic. This club was nice enough to let us play a couple shows for the cameras because we weren't allowed to have people here. Yeah, I was really nice to you. You were. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I know Carl hates it when I start off my creep like that, but I implore you to listen. Yeah, to if words. I had the taser. 
I'll just get into this. My creep today, he has a couple of great nicknames. Some call him the handyman. Mm -hmm. Other people call him the granny killer. Okay. But his friends called him Mike, Carl. Okay. I was going to say, handyman's not so bad. Nope. Nope. And I would say the granny killer is really light. It's pretty light. You could call Kevorky in that. And I like what he did. Yeah, certainly. Edwin Bernard, Mike, Caprat the third was a smart but easily enraged young kid. He was prone to violent outbursts as a child. He'd bully younger, smaller children. Nobody likes a bully, Carl. Well, that's who you bully, though. You, know, you don't bully the bigger kids. Yeah. Be but stupid. he was such a bully that, like, the teachers couldn't get him to stop, like, punching shit. Mm -hmm. So they brought in, like, these big dolls for him to punch instead of other kids. Oh, fun. Have you ever heard of anything like this? Yeah, like, take, take it out on this thing over here. Yeah. They're like, go punch this, please. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Agreed. So he began drinking by the age of 12. Mm -hmm. He grew up into a violent, addicted adult. His father later said uh, his son at one point attempted to murder his younger son and sexually assault his wife. She. Mike's stepmother. Now, he also went into hiding from his son for a Oh, he wanted to fuck time. his stepmother. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, he tried to rape her. So they went into hiding. Us? Uh, anyway, go on. All right. Either way. <laughs> so. February 21st, 1991, a gentleman named Lee Anthony Begay, 27, was found beaten to death on the beach in Courtney Campbell Mangroves. Caprit used Bugby's credit card to buy gas. Mm. A warrant was put out for his arrest, but he fled to New Jersey and he ended up turning himself in. Now, they charged him with the murder. They also questioned him about an attack on another man found set on fire alive near the same causeway the day after that attack. Now, our creeps have two things in common. They're both uh, the third, and uh, they both set their victims on fire. Oh, boy, did he. I got to uh, <laughs> <laughs> hold on, Carl. And this nope. wasn't outside of the uh, Israeli. No, this was in Tampa. <laughs> okay. This is Tampa. <laughs> so he ends up getting off on these charges. They didn't have enough evidence against him. He said he found the card, you know, he whatever. They couldn't prove he did anything. So. He ends up getting convicted of using the dead man's credit card. He's given house arrest. Guess where they made him serve his house arrest? Tampa? At his parents' house. Okay. His dad, who doesn't like him because he tried to rape that his sucks. wife. Yeah. Sucks so parents. Now he's at the house for two years. He's out of house arrest by May of 93. Now, his parents threw him out the second his house arrest was over. He moves in with his sister by the late summer. Now, he made a great impression on everybody in his new neighborhood, Carl. Uh, by beating the shit out of his girlfriend in the front yard. Now, neighbors witnessed it. They said first he pushed her to the ground, her purse went flying. Then he grabbed her by the hair, put her over his shoulder, and hauled her back into the house screaming. That's when the next door neighbors gave him another nickname, Carl. They referred to him as the Neanderthal. Well, what did she do to deserve this? Are you going to explain that part of it? Was she being lippy? Was she talking during a movie? What was going on? I don't know what she was doing. I'm guessing not talking in a movie while she was on the front line. This is him, by the way. Okay. He's a very handsome man. He looks like he could be an uh, artist on TV. Happy little trees. Everybody. Yeah, he looks like he could teach you how to paint or something. I want to make sure you got a glimpse of uh, this fucking sociopath. Okay. Good news, though, Carl. His father decided to give him a second chance and hired him to work for him in his handyman business. Well, that was very nice of him. Now, he did a great job for approximately seven weeks. During those seven weeks, Mike went on a spree, buddy. Uh-oh. And it started with Sophia Francis Garrity. She's an 80-year-old widowed woman who lived alone. And on August 7th, 1993, a fire erupted through her home, killing her. It was ruled accidental, but it turns out that uh, he ended up confessing to this later. So that was the first one. He set an old lady's house on fire, and she burned alive. Okay. Now, William and Alice Whitney... These two. He's really into fire, this guy. He's into a lot of things, okay. Carl. We're gonna get, we're going down a quick list. All right. Now, this is a lovely old couple. They're in their 80s. And uh, William was 84 and Alice was 83. They were trying to sell their house. And one day, they are just attacked and beaten in the middle of the day by someone pretending to be interested in the house. Their house was set on fire but did not burn down. Both people survived but were hospitalized. Alice had Alzheimer's. And uh, she couldn't, she was like no use to the cops. She just had a black eye. And she was like, is it time for breakfast? <laughs> yeah. And then the other guy, they be, he got beat so bad. He was like a vegetable. Okay. And he never came out of it. So now we're going to the next day, Carl, August 18th. 
a woman named Ruth Goldsmith dies in a fire at her mobile home. Uh, it was the whole thing was burnt down. She was 70 years old and she unfortunately lived next to a woman named Lydia Riddle. Uh, Carpet decided to escalate his attacks at this point uh, because well, I'm, I'm shocked that there's mobile homes in this area. Yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that one, there's one less of them. Thanks. Well, that's to, true. Yeah, to bike. He burnt that one down. But imagine being 70 years old and living in a mobile home. <laughs> like my grandma did. did my, she? My, my mom's mom. That woman was from Kansas. She was fucking weird. And she lived in a trailer. Your, till family's, she died. your family's fucking crazy. Yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking crazy. I know. I'm learning that. So <laughs> here's what I like about this guy. There's only one thing I like. He liked a good prank phone call. Oh, me too. So he would just be calling old women. Hey, why is your house burning down, jerky? <laughs> hey, why is it so hot in your room right now, jerky? How you doing there, sizzle tits? <laughs> is your titties on fire? <laughs> I fell down the stairs and my shoes fell off and then my house burned down very hurt is your house on fire too <laughs> it might be on fire you should check well his next two victims carl started getting uh obscene phone phone calls heavy breathing uh-huh violent threats sounds of masturbating into the phone and uh they weren't the only ones these calls were happening all over town so jacking it jacking it jacking it jack spanking it jacking it spanking it smack and i don't take it into the phone now, please do not let me forget the phone calls. We'll get back to that in a minute. Okay. But I mentioned a woman named Lydia Riddle. Now, she's 79 years old. She lived in the mobile home next door to the other lady. And uh, on September 2nd, a couple weeks after this, police determined that she had been bound with duct tape, raped, and then had a bunch of her blankets piled up on top of her and set on fire. <laughs> so now he's not just setting old people on fire. Or just beating them fucking up and trying to set their house on fire. Now he's straight up raping old women. Carl, don't get too upset. Oh, bitch, bitch, bitch. Police told the media she had received at least three phone calls from what sounded like the same man in the week before her death. Uh, apparently he broke in, prying open a utility door. Now, because of the suspicious nature of the fire, uh, i.e. her being raped and tied up, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, didn't her neighbor's house burn down like a month before? Right. Now they're starting to put it together. That leads us to Lorraine Alice Burnham. Daw. It's like those assholes running the uh, faucets in Home Alone. Yeah. You, don't, you can't have a calling card. It's a bad idea. It is. Now, this woman, her name, uh, like I said, is Alice. She was 87 years old. She lived at home. They found her dead in her home, wrapped in, in a bedspread. Pillows and shit on fire. It looked, like <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it had been set on fire, but the fire went out. He didn't do a very good job, but she had been also raped pretty hard <laughs> uh, all around the world. He went on this 87 year old woman. And the good news is, though, she fought pretty hard mm -hmm. because they found her dentures next to her body with a chunk of flesh in it that they think <laughs> off part of this motherfucker's shoulder. And then her dentures fell while he was raping That's her. That's fun. But they found out later that uh, she died in probably the most heinous way of all of them. Oh, yeah? What's, what was because that? Because after he was done raping her, he thought she was having a heart attack. So he stomped on her neck till it snapped. <laughs> <laughs> so, fun fact, the dad... Did maintenance work for all of these people? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a connection there. The dad is the one who went and put the for sale side in the front of the house so those two people got the shit kicked out of them. This guy was just beating up all and murdering all of his dad's clients and raping them. All these fucking old people are probably not helping the business, I would imagine. Definitely not doing his father any, any right. favors. Yeah, probably not. The police get an it's anonymous boy tip. right there. Anonymous tip. This guy's got a connection through the through the dad. The cops start following him around. And uh, they start investigating. They put surveillance on him. They uh, put out warrants for his car home in person. They asked for 50 pubic hairs off of this guy just to match it to the rapes. And uh, they arrested him outside of his parents' house. And uh, he immediately confessed, Carl. Okay, good. Uh, 22 counts, including four murders in the attack on the Whitney's burglary and arson. The USA Today named him the granny killer, but I think he should be the granny raper slash killer because Burner he downer. did a little bit of both. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about all the arson, too? And also, you started this off talking about how he's an alcoholic and stuff, but is that 
have anything to do with any of this? No, or? he's a sociopath, insane person. This is a psycho. Per- this is a maniac. You think your guy was a maniac because he murdered his family? This guy murdered a bunch of other people's old grandmothers. In fact, yeah. one of those grandmothers, they loved her. They called her the cookie lady. All the kids on the street. He murdered the fucking cookie lady. He raped the cookie lady and set her on fire, everyone. So, oops, they're right there. <laughs> In Florida, they tried him separately for all of these. Yeah. And the first two, he got the death penalty, so they stopped charging him with everything, and they're just like, whatever. They left him in jail. He tried to kill himself when he first went in, but he failed because he's a pussy. So they give him two. He's got two death sentences on him. And uh, in prison, turns out, he kind of liked it. Oh, okay. He was bragging about how he was getting along. He was doing the... uh, uh, what is it, George Bluth in prison, just yeah. like having the time of his life. This is going great. He said he was playing the stock market, reading paperbacks, mm-hmm. uh, having a great old time until some other guys just decided, oh, this is the dude who was raping and murdering grandma. So they stabbed him to death in April of 1995. And that's the way the news goes. This man was a truly heinous, disgusting individual who got off on raping old women. We don't like sex with old women do we carl no we do not that's gross stop talking about it okay let's move on <laughs> that's my creep this week go to the creepoff.com and remember to vote for your pal Vinny. or vote for uh carl because he brought the bigger creep uh, i don't think so so uh let's see what we got here we got a couple more super chats james garner thanks for the 499 good ending for the kid but cop for a dad my nightmare well, good point. I'd rather have the police officer as my father, but I know what you mean. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. It seems I like mean, you're not uh, going to get away with anything, but at least he's not going to stab you. Yeah. At least he probably doesn't think that you have like a white demon inside you that he needs to uh, get out with a knife. Yeah. Some I will tell you that. this, though. A uh, cop dad will beat you with a phone book. Oh, really? Yeah. It doesn't leave the, the bruises. You know? Smart. He knows what to do. So, uh, E, thanks for the five bucks. I thought the Meg was an above average size shark, not. Hey, oh, whoa, whoa, hey. whoa, whoa, whoa. Not nicey. You be hey. nice. That's fucked up. You're, you're real. <laughs> I think you're really funny. Carl, are you ready to do some cop cam videos? Because I love them and I look forward to them every week. Yes. In fact, I have uh, just a fun one for us today. And again, I want to thank uh, Jeff Spangler for sending this over. The always, Spang. Always does a good job sending us fun stuff to look at. And uh, so this is uh, 3.30 in the afternoon. And there's a gentleman in his BMW who's passed out in his car. Uh-huh. And the police want to come up and uh, inspect what's going on. So Why that's where we pick up the story. Cops are being busybodies again. Yep. Why don't you just go adopt a kid and leave this poor guy alone? <laughs> Here we go. Sleepy time. This is labeled. Today, we're in Evanston, Illinois, where a man was found asleep behind the wheel of his car. He can't figure out how to open the door. I hate Just before 3.30 on a fall afternoon, police got a call about this man, later identified as James Collins. The caller said he was stumbling and had trouble getting inside his silver BMW. It appears Collins is also having trouble opening his car door for the officer. You All only right. get one opportunity to make a first impression. That's true. Yeah, sir. We're off to a bad start here. So now he finally gets the door open, and the police officer has a pretty basic question. Well, first, he asks for his ID, and he can't find it. So then he has a pretty basic question, and uh, we'll hear his, his answer. Okay. You live here? Yes, sir. Where do you live at? Evanston. What's your address? Um, 1738. 1738 what? 13. What's your whole address, sir? Um, 1318. 1318? Yes, sir. 1318 what? 18. Excuse me? Uh, 1318, sir. 1318 what? Um, 1318. Are these fucking coordinates? What is he doing? <laughs> He's fucking out of it. Wow. What's your address? 1318. What do you want? In the chat, uh, Dr. Scotty Jones said, give him a break. He just woke up. Yeah, right. That's a good point. He's a little bit out of it. Yeah. Just woke up. Yeah. He's like, uh, you're bothering me during my nap time, sir. I bet you the cop has another question. What's that? Uh, is it your third clip? 
Oh, yeah. So he finally gets his uh, his ID out and the address that he was saying is not even close. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next question the officer had, I think it's uh, labeled pretty nicely on your cup. How much have you had to drink? Yes. <laughs> so how much have you had to drink today? No. Nothing? No, sir. Because you've given me multiple addresses. Your eyes are all glassy. You had trouble opening your door. You're a little you're swaying when you're standing. So how much have you had to drink today, sir? Um. None. Vinny's had none to drink today. I think he's lying. You think so? I think he might be lying. You think maybe he's a little bit inebriated? James Gardner, thanks for the dollar ninety nine. He says, good points. He's right. Um, I think this guy is lying. Or he did something else. This could be pills. Yeah. This could be lots of things. All right. Let's see. Let's. Uh, <laughs> the officer wants to know if he has his keys on him. Okay. You have your keys on you? Yes, sir. Hey, where are they? At? Now he's clipping his wallet back together. He's got his money and his credit cards. He's handing that to the officer. These are not your keys. This is your IDs. And all right, I'll hold on to these for you. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. Where are your keys? Now he's bending over to pick up his leaf <laughs> from the ground. All right, sir. When my partner gets, where, where are your keys at, sir? sir. Are they? Uh, stay right there. Uh, it's in the <laughs> where are your car keys at? Yes, sir. Just stay right. Stay out here. <laughs> he's he's like, like my leaves. He's like, what's this in my head? Like, I gotta leave. Will that start the car? Maybe there's a TikTok video that shows you how to start a car with a leaf. I don't know. This is really marvelous. This is crazy. So. Uh, now he finally confesses that he has had uh, a couple drinks between this, you and me, officer. This day. Between you and me and this leaf. I may I, have had a few shots. I can't lie to you, my new friend. <laughs> uh, here we go. What did you drink today? Oh, I had um, uh, drinks. 11 drinks? <laughs> All right. What kind of drinks did you have? I had a lot of whiskey drink. <laughs> I had a vodka drink. I had a cider drink. <laughs> yeah. I had a lager drink. He goes. He goes. What kind of drinks do you have? And he goes. Eleven. All right. Not not the question, but I get it. I gotta say that's impressive. He didn't know his address. We know how many drinks or drinks he had. I lose track after. Four I don't five. believe him. I think he had thirteen or eighteen. Yeah. You know what, Vinny? You might be right. So, the question, of course, is: Are you willing to take a sobriety test? Yeah. Hold on. Flutter dashy sixty four two dollars. Hulk Hogan meet up when and where Thursday night. At Hulk Hogan's place. Yes, we'll be there. The whole crew will be down at Hulk Hogan's bar and grill, whatever that place is. What is it called? Do you know? No. What the f- <laughs> Nobody knows. No, somebody knows. They were talking about it in the Discord this morning. And uh, it's kind of funny because it's called Hogan's Hangout. Cool. Because somebody asks, is this a Hulk Hogan themed bar or does he just own it? And uh, Jerry goes both. So he's he created his own bar that's about him, which is hilarious. Carl, you, you don't think that. you're ever going to have the WATP grill? No, I don't think I'm going to do that. Really? No, I don't think so. You order the Carl hamburger. That'd be funny. Everyone has to like put in shitty teeth and one of the glasses with the nose and everything to serve people. And they just laugh like assholes as they bring you your food. <laughs> shrieking. You know what? I don't think this business is going to do very well, yeah. Vinny. You, with terrible puns on the menu. I'm going to say no to this right now. The producer, Chris P. Fries. Oh, that's pretty good. I was going to say, I'll, I'll have one of your Carl hamburgers, please. Yeah. Yeah. Less. No. Do you want sass or no sass on that? <laughs> Extra sass. All right. All uh, right. Sobriety so, test. Yeah. So he asks, are you willing to take a sobriety test? And I, I think this is the right move right here. All right, sir. Based on what you're telling me, no, no, uh, how much you've had to drink in yeah, your uh, the fact that you were asleep behind the wheel. Yes. Uh, you got calls about you stumbling, you're having a little bit of trouble walking. When I asked you for your keys, you picked up a leaf. I mean, probably. Are you willing to submit? I, I believe you're under the influence of alcohol, all right? Yes, sir. Are you willing to submit to sobriety tests? No, sir. No, sir? All right. Are you willing to uh, submit to a PBT, a portable breath breath test? No, sir. No? Okay. So you're not, gonna, you're in, you're not willing to submit to any tests? No, sir. Okay. I got to say, that's probably the right move right there. Yeah. Because you're that loaded. You've been day drinking. You've been pounding drinks all day. Obviously, you're wasted. But if you're going to get out of this in any single way or get it reduced or something, you don't want to give them the hard evidence. 
yeah. of how wasted you are. Your license is gone at this point. Yeah. So, but, I mean, might as well buy. take the smaller. Right. That, that, so I'm not an attorney. Don't listen to me and my advice. I just think from my perspective, this is what I probably would have done. And there's a reason why he knows what to do. And that's uh, my next clip here, number seven. Okay. Oh, okay. I get it. I see the clip. Have you ever had a DUI before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When's the last time you got a DUI? Um, what year? Uh, 2018. 2018? Yes, sir. He started to wake up a little bit. He actually answered that question with an appropriate response. That was good. What year? He actually threw out a year. Who knows? 2011, 2018. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing this guy's uh, probably likes the alcohol a little bit too much. If he's blackout, not blackout, passed out drunk at 3.30 in the afternoon. That's impressive. It shows commitment right but there. But you know what, though? His car is parked perfectly in that space. It is, though. Yeah. You know what? I'm not even sure if the keys were in the ignition, so I'm not sure how they're going to get him on that, to be honest with you. And yesterday was uh, St. Patrick's Day. I'm sure a lot of the people watching the show now were probably this drunk at 3.30 in the afternoon. This is not St. Patrick's Day, though, that no. we're watching right now. This, this is, is just not. November 3rd. Okay. So no, no real reason to be this drunk mid-afternoon. Oh. On November 3rd. All right. Well, I think he has a good defense here. Is that what I'm looking at? Okay. So, yeah, he tries to pull. And listen, when you're in trouble with the police, you know, you fucked up. Sometimes you try to do the thing where it's like, hey, my uh, my uncle was a former police officer. I don't know if that means anything. Or, you know, you throw out something. This guy picks the wrong thing. <laughs> okay. I'm a soldier. You're a soldier? Yes, you're still a soldier right now? With who? I. Yes, I. I am. Um, I'm, I'm a military soldier. Yeah. Sir. Where did you serve? Eighty second. Sumac Army. When? <laughs> Eighty second, sir. When? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Eighty second Airborne, sir. <laughs> 82nd. Oh, what? Yeah, the 82nd Airborne. 82nd. 82nd. Yeah, but when? 82nd. What do you think? Duh, I just told you that. So this police officer is also former military. Uh-huh. And I don't, I'm pretty sure you don't say I'm a soldier. Wouldn't you say, you know, I'm former military, or you would say what your rank was or something like that? Yep. I don't think you just say I'm a soldier, <laughs> sir. I'm a soldier. It's like, oh, you're a soldier right now? Uh yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> okay. You didn't really have a lot of follow-up for that. Probably not a good idea because um, I don't know if you know this, but military guys, when people pretend that they're in the military. Don't like that very much. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> not a big fan of that. So then, for some dumb reason, probably because he's pretty drunk, he agrees to doing the field sobriety. Awesome. This was a bad move, in my opinion. You see what happens here. Uh, I didn't tell you to move. I didn't tell you to move. Just stay right there. Put your left foot on the line. Yes, sir. All right. Ready? All right. Now, now place your right foot. On the line in front of the left, just like this. See how I'm doing it? Yes, sir. Uh, keep your left foot on the line and put your right foot in front of your left foot. All right, I, I didn't tell you to start walking. I just need you to. Again. Feet together. Ready? Feet together. Nope. I just stay right there. Place your feet together. Like, you see my feet? Feet together. Hands at your side. All right. All right, I didn't ask, I didn't tell you to do anything. I'm asking you to put your feet together, your feet together, and hands at your side. Yes, sir. And again. All right, sir. I got one last question. Are you going to do a prelim preliminary breath test? Yes, sir. I, I'll try it. All right. I'll give you one more chance to do that, all right? Yes, sir. Feet together. See yes, my sir. feet? Yes, sir. Stand up straight. Hands at your side. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, I didn't ask you to do anything else. All right. <laughs> I love these police officers always start playing Simon Says with these drugs so they can never get it right. Oh, my God. They can never fucking figure it out. This guy's an eager beaver. He just wanted to get it done. <laughs> he really is. But I don't even know why. They, I, I guess they have to go through with this. The guy can't even stand up straight. You really think that he's going to be able to pass a field sobriety test? If I was the police officer, I'd be like, look, if we could do this, but you're just going to fall over and embarrass yourself. So so then they bring I like out. A, I like a show, though. I, I'm down for a show on the side of the road. It breaks and, up your day a little. No, I agree with you. That is fun, especially if he does fall over. So then they bring out the, the breathalyzer. This is my last clip on here, and this is impressive. I've never seen this. All right, sir. You blew a .343, all right? Legal limit's .08. All right, sir? 
<laughs> so, so right now, I need you to turn around and put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest for DUI. Point three four three. And that's a fact, Jack. Wow. Wow. So I looked this up because I've never seen someone blow a point three four before. It apparently it, wow. when you get to point three one and above, that's life threatening. You could get alcohol poisoning. This is how drummers and rock bands die. This this is like the um, choking on your own vomit while you're passed out level yeah. of alcoholism. That's a don't stay away from a ham ham sandwich if you're that drunk. Everybody, that is why. Yeah, that is why he was just sleeping in his car, <laughs> completely out of it. Point three four three. So that's fucking insane. Very impressive, sir. <laughs> wow. Congrats. Yeah, great job, buddy. You killed it. I guess that makes it time for voicemails, Carl. Yeah, th- those ain't real, dude. It's over four times the limit. Four times the limit would be point three two. He's point three four. Jesus. So it's crazy. I do think we missed one in here. Yep. Uh, cute boy Charlie. Thanks for the five. Was that euros, Carl? Vote for Carl. No, that's pounds, d- baby. Pounds. Vinny doesn't know his wrestling history. Bad news, Brown. Vinny. I know bad news. Brown is. Hold on. We got to look at uh, Matthew Rowley, and then we'll get back to cute boy Charlie. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, Matthew Riley, five bucks says, ouch, this was a rough one for Carl. Vinny really brought it. Still, Vinny sucks. Vote Carl every time. Come on. I don't I brought that it. Bad. I brought it. I don't suck that Matthew, bad. Matthew, I brought it. Vote for me because I brought it this week. Matthew Riley both made us whiny bitches there. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Fucking incredible. Uh, so what's the question about Bad News Brown, Vinny? I don't know. He says, I don't know wrestling. I don't know Bad News Brown. Bad News Brown. It was like a pimp and he murdered women. He was in WCW. He's the guy you brought for your uh, wrestling creep. There you go. When I brought the big boss man. <laughs> don't and, ever tell Vinny he doesn't know his wrestling history. Yeah. And if you think I don't know it, you think Carl does? No. All right. I do not. Let's do some uh, voicemails. The Creep Off voicemail segment is brought to you by the city of Syracuse. The SU basketball team has opted out of the NIT tournament. Even so, the men's team is still expected to double the ratings of the women's team. <laughs> See you in Syracuse. God, Syracuse has gotten bad, haven't they? they they're not even in the NIT. It's not good. Yikes. I miss Bayheim. I mean, so what? You had to pull a vagrant from the outside of his bumper every now and again. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a message from Chad's missing upper lip. Hmm. Vinny, Carl. Chad's missing upper lip. How about this? Megan can be the results chick as long as she's on mute and does it like mine style. You shut the fuck up, hold up a cue card that says results, and that's it. God damn it, I've never heard someone so annoying. Oh, Thanks. fuck off. Fuck you, bye. You didn't think that story about how she won the spelling bee and how she held the sign upside down wasn't cute? What are you guys crazy? I did see someone in the chat say that uh, Red had meg on today's show had the best voice so far okay well you're all gonna have your say in this but you megan alone i mean it's not a terrible idea we we could bring some of these girls oh no i'm fine with them yeah okay (laughs) Uh, holding up a side's a fun way to do it wheel of consequence idea carl hi carl and vinny i got an idea for your little wheel of consequences Mm -hmm. kind of building off of that the change your name idea uh Vinny should have to just change his name to V I N N Y, and Carl should just change it to C A R L instead of Who Bugs Carl. Or, or Vinny, Vinny, Vinny. 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 Yeah. Legally change your last name to Hamburger, Vinny, and I'll just Vinny. spell my nickname differently. <laughs> Perfect. I'm fine with that. V I N N Y. That my yeah. heart poster will finally make sense. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to change the spelling of my first name. I don't think that's a good idea, but I do like legally changing my last name to hamburger. That's fun. Uh, got some love for uh, some actual love for Meg, Carl. Hey, watching the latest uh, creep off on YouTube. And I got to say big fan of Pitts from Kentucky. I mean, Megan from Kentucky. She's awesome. Love the show. That's I, right. Megan we got some uh, some other feedback on the results girl contest. Hey, Carl and Vinny, this is for the creep off. So yeah, that last review girl did fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin name her or some shit. My hell yeah! Can't remember if I played that. Sorry, that's a couple what? weeks old. Did you say my hell yeah? <laughs> Very good. And then I have uh, this voicemail for us. It's a little long. Uh, we'll see if we can get through it. 
Hi, Carl. This is Jeff Heisen. I'm the co-host of the Tom Myers versus the West of the World podcast. Fuck you, you Heisen. I had an opportunity the other day to uh, listen to the podcast, your podcast, and Billy, Billy Paulino was reviewing the Michael Mira show. I got to tell you, it was nice for a change to hear him not make fun of me and my role on Tom's show. I've never quite understood why he's so hard on me. We have more in common than we actually do have differences. Hmm. One thing is we both work for nerds with enormous egos. Work for and we both think they were actually fun, that we're funnier than we actually are. That is true. I do have a couple of tips for Vinny oh, that can help him on. For one, whenever your host stops talking, you need to have a signature laugh. Yeah. I like to use. <laughs> <laughs> also, when your host introduces <laughs> you, be sure to have a funny anecdote ready. With Tom, I would use something like, I had a taco salad for lunch yesterday, and boy, did I feel like Donald Trump. <laughs> With Carl, you could use something like, I listened to the Misfits on the way to work today, and boy, are my arms tired. What you're doing there is you're talking about something your host hates and also using a classic joke. Anyway, Vinny, I hope these tips help. Don't call me back. Thanks, Jeff Eisen, for the phone call. That laugh, though. You got that down, dude. It's good. Bravo. It's so annoying. Bro. Oh, you know what? Cute boy Charlie does have me right. Two pounds. He's got me. He was right. He was facing Bad News Brown. Oh, and Roddy I said Piper it was with... Junkyard Dog. Oh, Vinny, you brought shame to our program. How dare you, Ladies sir? Ladies and gentlemen, take I my card. I am so glad Cute Boy take Charlie my fan is here. Card. It's fine. I am so you glad you it. were here to call him on this bullshit. What else are you lying to us about, Vinny? What else? Is this even a comedy club? I've been spelling my name with a Y the whole time. Motherfucker. <laughs> 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 uh, so listen, I got to, uh, I'm looking through these and everybody's leaving a super long fucking voicemail. Yeah, Dwyer Christian, 45 fucking seconds per call. Ah, sorry, guys. 45 seconds. I'm done with voicemails. Now. Okay. I want to play these guys. I really do. Because they're funny shit, but you got to fucking, you can't send me something. We'll play, play one of them. Let's see if you're right, if they're funny or not. I'm just saying that to make them feel better, Carl. I don't oh, know okay. if they're funny. I'm not wasting my time. All right. Fair enough. Carl, I think it's time for a scum parade. Could you play my favorite jingle? Watch out for the scum parade. Oh, no, it's scum parade. Look out for the scum parade. Making Vinny. part is that this really does make your day you love these stories more than anything in life you know what i forgot about this one that we've had i've been meaning to play this too so i'm gonna throw this one out there. okay that's tight who sent that in i don't know but we've had it a long time and it doesn't get enough love oh that's great sorry i don't have it labeled but carl is there a meeting going on next door to us Vinny? hold on i'll talk I just hear a lot of people talking. Out that we sh there shouldn't be people right next to us. There's a hallway here. It's not oh, necessarily a, a meeting place. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he's slammed the door to send a message. That's always good. I didn't slam it. Sounded slammy to me. Didn't you hear me yell? Shut the fuck up, you cunts! I didn't. You blab them out, cunts. Listen, maybe you can say that in a comedy club, but not on YouTube. All right, watch your mouth. Okay, good point. Carl, there's some new laws going around. Yes, there are. And uh, I figured we should probably start talking about it here. Because, Congress is acting, everyone. Yeah, here's the situation. Two teenage boys from Miami, Florida, were arrested in December, Carl, for allegedly creating and sharing AI-generated nude images of male and female classmates without consent, So, according to police reports. Here's the question, because I don't know the details of this, many. Are they finding an attractive girl because they want to know what she looks like naked? Or are they finding like fat girls and goofing on them with these AI deep face? Because there's two different things there. There are. But the parents are very, very upset about this, Carl. And I think I would be more upset if they were making fun of my daughter who looks like me than I would be <laughs> yes. if I had a cute daughter. Right. Like these 13-year-old kids are beating off to AI-generated photos of my daughter. Like, oh, I assume... Cool. 
I assume all of them are jerking off at all times. Even sure. all of them. They're all jerking it at some point. Well, These you kids. like to think about teenage boys jerking off, Vinny, but let's not do that on this show, all right? I'm That's sorry, what we talk about. I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> That's how we talk about it. Jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, jack, spanking it, jacking it, spanking it. The boys are 13 and 14. They created the uh, images of students who are also between the ages of 12 and 13. Not good. Definitely not a good choice used for AI. The Florida case appears to be the first arrest in criminal charges as a result of alleged sharing of AI generated nudes to come to light. The boys were charged with third degree felonies. Wow. The same level of crimes as grand theft auto or false imprisonment under a state law passed in 2022, which makes it a felony to share any altered sexual depiction of a person without their consent. Yeah. Now I not sure how I feel about this one. I have mixed emotions about it, Vinny, because I understand why let's say you're a 14 year old girl, you're, you know, in high school and someone's making AI nudes of you and passing along with the other classmates. Now on one hand, you'd be like, well, that's like an invasion of my privacy. I don't want people thinking that I have nude photos of me. But on the other hand, it's kind of great because now you can say that anything people find is fake and AI generated. Oh, yeah. So when I've been dealing with this shit back in high school. You have to deal with this? No, that's what you tell people. I've been dealing with this shit back in high school. It's all fake. Right. Everybody's making yeah, fake stuff. No, I've agreed with when, you. When the uh, the dick pics of me eventually surface, I'm just going to be like, oh, no, that's all fake. I, I have a much bigger hog than that. This is just computer generated remember dustin diamond yeah i sure do yeah okay. so i got the pleasure of hanging out with dustin yes, Diamond for a couple of days and he loved to talk about that fucking sex tape of his oh because he's got like a i've never seen it but he, i've heard he's got a big dick right so here's what he claims okay this is what he claimed god rest his soul it was a goof I hired a guy. They didn't show me my face in the dick. I hired a guy with a giant dick to stand in for me in this thing because I figured if I was going to release it, I wanted everybody to think I had a giant dick. That's fucking brilliant. So I'm say pull... whatever you want to about Dustin Diamond. I don't know if he's telling me the truth or not. I'm pulling Peter North out of retirement. I love it. Right. But that was idea. his claim, too, that it was fake and that it was all for a fucking goof. So I don't know. Hey, but... uh, Jenny Jingles, would you mind fucking a porn star for uh, a goof that i'm doing she's like uh yeah let's go <laughs> what are we waiting for what a great joke <laughs> yeah i've been on this joke too girl that's look fine. at let's look go. at me sitting in the corner masturbating this is hysterical <laughs> <laughs> uh so i don't know anything about this but uh how do you how, oh go ahead i'm sorry james center thanks for the 499 i nominated merch for doing revenge porn on a former cam girl he failed to hook up with all because she cleared up lies he told on his show oh i don't know about that either cool look forward to meeting well, we'll, here all we'll about talk it. about it in largo florida everybody yeah great. Uh, how do you feel about this whole thing they're passing laws now about ai generated you gotta nudes protect and... kids you gotta protect kids but it's just a weird thing we're, well we're, like, it, we're talking 12 is it harming kids. the kids though i don't know i couldn't tell you i don't really care but i'm saying if you're for the interest of protecting a 12 year old they probably don't need the pressures of the idea of people jerking off to them at 12 years old. You know what? We shouldn't be talking about this. Let's bring in redhead Meg, who's still backstage. I want to get her take on this. You were once in uh, high school, I assume, junior high. Yeah, I was. How would you feel about guys uh, circulating fake nudes of you around? Uh, I would I not would enjoy that. You wouldn't be flattered by all. that? <laughs> no. No, no I would it. not. Um, I think it, it it's because of the uh, the time that we live in now where, I mean, when I was in high school, I am in my 30s now. So when I was in high school, cell phones weren't a really big deal, but it was. Microsoft Paint wasn't as good back then. You couldn't really it, pull it off the way you can exactly. now. Exactly. Yeah. So. But having it yeah. circle around now, it'll just, it lasts forever. Well, yeah, it does and it doesn't. Because I, I guess my point is that as soon as AI can just generate anyone being nude, like the Taylor Swift thing. So now yeah. there's just hundreds and thousands of images of Taylor Swift nude and, and in Bukaki images and things like that. Not that I looked it up. I'm just assuming. But right. I have to imagine that once ever, there's all out there, and it's just like, well, it's all fake. Who gives a shit? Everyone's got it. It's all fake. Who was the uh, musician who released an album titled, was it Avril Lavigne who had an album called Nude? So when people Googled Avril Lavigne nude, her oh, album would come smart. up. smart. I didn't know about that. Yeah, I think that was the thing that happened. It might be somebody else. I don't know. Yeah. Same, kind of mind oh, bending, same kind of mind bending as a, um, in order for people to 
look up Disney Frozen and the frozen body of Walt Disney not showing up, the new Frozen movie came out. Is that the same thing? Thanks for coming on, Meg. It was great to talk to you Thanks, again. Man. Appreciate it. <laughs> Ugh, I'm Disney now after this past WATP. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say this, Carl. Yeah. My stance is I'm on AI side. Always going to be on AI side. That's just I, I, yes. I actually appreciate our new leaders. Yes. <laughs> yes. AI. I, I'm AI. happy to do their bidding. <laughs> so listen, here's my, my thing. You probably should be using AI to uh, generate naked pictures of children. You probably should not. Let's, even if you are a child yourself. Even if you're thinking like, no, I know how Congress are going to go with this one. Don't chance it. Don't even chance it on this one. I love it. Uh, let's go to Cleveland. I hear home of a, a few creeps that we know. Mm -hmm. Some people would call this next story a little disturbing, inhumane, or even barbaric. Uh, but the Erie County Sheriff's Department is calling it a crime. Is my favorite start to a story ever. Okay. Disturbing, inhumane, and barbaric. And by the way, that's illegal. Good point. I'll be the judge of that. A father is accused of using a cattle prod to discipline his two young children, seven and eight years old. Well, what's the point of having a cattle prod if you can't use to it? To prod cattle. What if you don't have any cattle? Then what are you using it for? Why do you have it? Because it's fun. Why do you have toys? <laughs> Why do you own so many toys? Because they're fun. They are fun. Yeah. 34-year-old Robert Bors was arrested Wednesday night after a tip from child services led them to his home. Bors was taken to the Erie County Jail and charged with three counts of domestic violence and three counts of endangering children. Well, hold on a second. Did the cops ask the children what they did that was so naughty? They got them cattle. I hope they also asked what they did. And he did. No fact checking. He did. And the kid said, asked for dinner. Okay. Well, maybe I didn't deserve that. Okay. I don't know if that's true. Needed help with my homework. So. <laughs> so after the police were done using their taser on Robert Bors, they lectured him about the dangers of electric shock, right? Yeah. The device is probably a pole three feet long with two probes on either end. It has a button. When you push it, the button delivers a shock between the two probes. Boris did make some admissions to using the instrument to discipline his children. He said, it's terrible. I don't know what would compel someone to think they could use a device like this with his kids. I'm kind of bewildered, said the sheriff. Boris made his initial appearance in court. His bond was set at $90,000. Yeah, those ain't real dudes. Says cattle is just a suggestion. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Let's not get crazy on this. You know what I want to know, Vinny? What's that? How much electricity is too much? How do you OD on electricity? Like, would Edison know that? What's the answer? Well, when your brain melts and comes out of your nose. Right, but what's the amount of electricity that it takes to have that happen, though? Because because electricity is kind of like alcohol. Some of it's fine. You know, if you get a little bit of Some fine. People can handle a little more than others. Right. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. So he's building up a tolerance for these kids. Uh. Dang lizard, thanks for the five euros. Vinny, are you ready to rejoin the Church of the Holy Stutterer? Repent, rejoice, and reject all naps and hamburger. Fear the dispenser of karmic justice. Yeah, dang lizard's working out a new religion. And I, I don't know. I might sign up too. I hope I hope will have me. You made it sound pretty good, dang lizard. It does. Thank you for the five euros. What about Yankees suck on there? We didn't we missed that uh, super chat. I uh I am so sorry. Yankee Suck $5 Canadian says, you guys need to cover Shakira body cam footage on Lens of Law first two results. Oh, that I will write down. Shakira body cam footage. Yeah, th this is intriguing to me. Now, is the Mr. body Paul cam located up? in the shower? Or? Yeah, well, let's find out here. Oh, I've seen this one. We watched this one in Detroit, dude. We did. Yeah. Pull it up. They're calling Shakira, the lady, you know, who remember who called the cops. And then uh, the boyfriend comes out of the apartment, like the Notre Dame logo and the oh, cops yeah. shoot him. Yeah, that's not Shakira. That's not Shakira. We we, we played that one and the follow up one of her. Yeah, she's a real problem. She's a real problem for a sure. But thank you for the problem. suggestion. Yankees suck. And I agree. The Yankees do suck. Shall we go down to Mississippi, Carl? Yeah, let's do it. A police officer pleaded guilty Thursday to forcing a detainee to lick urine off the floor of his jail cell. <laughs> that's fun. <laughs> you know we all say we're for law and order but then here we are well it's annoying to me that they keep disciplining the police officers for all the things you want to do like how are they going to recruit new police officers if you can't even make an inmate lick his own urine off the floor like, like okay let's just take away all the perks then fine yeah 
I'm supposed to clean it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Good point. I thought I was here to police. I'm policing, not janitorying over here. All right. Um, <laughs> Michael Christian Green, he's 26 years old. He resigned from the Pearl Police Department in December, four days after a security camera caught him forcing the man to commit what officials call a disturbing act. Did they ask if they were out of paper towels? Maybe they're out of paper towels. I didn't ask. I don't know. But right. I like how they're trying to make this guy sound so terrible. Green, who has a large cross tattooed on one arm and the word blessed tattooed on the other, mm -hmm. stood calmly before the federal judge and pleaded guilty to the charge of deprivation of civil rights. Yeah, that's a good point. Since when do you point out tattoos on someone? What's that? What does that have to do with anything? I'll tell you what. He is blessed. He didn't have to lick up piss. Right. He's the one telling other people to lick up piss. So what they, a life. they yelled at him. They said, you shouldn't do this. They made him apologize. And uh, the detainee only identified as being knocked on a door and tried to tell Green that he needed to use the restroom, but ultimately urinated in the corner of the cell after his request was ignored for some time. That's what Green was caught on video footage threatening to beat B.E. with the phone. You're fixing to go in there and you're going to lick that piss up, Green said, according to the document. Do you understand me? I have to say, Vinny, for me, the worst part is licking the floor of the cell. It's not even my own urine that's the problem here. It's just urine. Ugh. You know what I mean? Yes. The floor of the cell is like, that's repulsive. Worst part, Green stood in the doorway and used his cell phone to record as the man... <laughs> and relented to the officer's orders. When B.E. gagged multiple times, Green told him, don't spit it out. Yeah, he vomited. Yeah, of course he did. Oh, I think I would too. I would <laughs> chop out my own tongue after this. The way Christian says that, this is Jim Norton's dream. <laughs> he might be right about that. <laughs> uh, 3D says, you're in trouble. Oh! Little, Jim, little Jimmy Norton's going to go down to uh, Mississippi and misbehave. Yep. And his belly is feeling a little off today. Drink a lot of water. Green remains free on bond until his May 24th sentencing. He faces up to one year in prison and a $10,000 fine. So he's out the force? Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about creeps in the NFL, Carl. Okay. Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. A former Tennessee Titan scout has been indicted on two counts of first-degree murder and the death of his girlfriend and her unborn child. Okay. Uh, Blaze Taylor, 27, was arrested by the U.S. Marshals on a grand jury indictment. Taylor worked as a pro scout for the Titans for four years. He's also the son of former University of Tennessee assistant coach Trooper Taylor. The younger Taylor is accused of poisoning Jade Benning on February 25th and the unborn baby, which Taylor f allegedly fathered. She was rushed to 911, and Benning appeared to have to be having an allergic reaction and asked for paramedics. Police said Benning's condition immediately became critical. Her unborn fetus died on February 27th. Uh, Benning was not able to be interviewed by detectives before she died on March 6th. So it took her a week, over a week to die. Yes. This is awful. Well, two weeks. I got to say, how does that, is that's not how poisoning works. Is it? I think it's going to yeah. be hard to prove. Well, police said months of investigation led by homicide, homicide detective, Adam Reese, involving scientists from the crime lab mm -hmm. crime lab scientists carl yeah but and you, doctors but they got to prove that taylor is the one who made her eat or drink or yep. whatever this was he, they do and so i would think that he'd have a very easy defense just be like she's a dumb broad that she was pregnant and shoving everything in her mouth she had cravings for pickles and peanut butter she said she had cravings for nail polish remover <laughs> What yeah, me to tell you, Look, she needed liquid plumber to diet for some reason. I don't know why. That's what she wanted. Women, am I right? God, <laughs> women, come on. If you come mix on. it with some bleach, it's fine. What are we doing? I'm just saying. I I think he's gonna get off on this one. This is gonna be he hard. He very to well can. He very well. The can. only witness is gone. <laughs> the witness is done. So, dude, if you want to, uh, again, the surefire way to cause the abortion: pop rocks and coke. That's true. You don't need the Drano. You just need some pop rocks and coke. Yeah, Dwight Christian says pregnant women crave paint chips. Correct. This is this is what they're looking for. They crave red brick scrapings. This is what they're to... looking for when they get up at 4 a.m. Jesus. <laughs> it's a hormonal thing. You know, they're not thinking straight. I, I feel like I'm coming up with this guy's defense for him right now. If he wants to hire me, I'll, I'll take the case. Welcome to Teeth and Tits Detective Agency. That's right. Teeth and Tits. We'll save you. All right, everybody, that is this week's Scum Parade. I want to thank 
Redhead Meg for coming out and joining us today. Fantastic job, Redhead Meg. Remember, if you would like to be a results girl, here's your opportunity. You need to have the following things. Good internet, a camera, a microphone, and be available 1 o'clock Eastern time on Mondays. And you need to email me by noon this Wednesday, thecreepoffpod at gmail.com. And close a picture of yourself. It can't hurt. Can't and hurt. can't hurt. And uh, we will uh, be opening. If we have one more contestant or a few more contestants, we'll give you an audition. Uh, if not, the voting will start at the middle of next week, and we'll uh, make sure everybody knows about it. Sounds good. All right, Carl, it's nice to be important. It's more important to be nice. To creepoff.com to vote. We'll see you next week. WHPlive.com will be in Largo, Florida this Friday night, March 22nd. Get your tickets. Gagia. What an asshole! Hell, Bergen ain't gonna have it. Whoa, you got butt slam! <laughs> what the oh, hell oh, is this oh. supposed to be? It's the creep off. Jeez Louise. Do, do, and do up. Do, do, and do up. Jesus Christ! This is very disrespectful.